this book is interesting. We're going to read some more of it. Uh -huh. From the Worlds Without End. Page 18, Mapping the Multiverse. <clears throat> the word cosmos. <clears throat> cosmos in Greek, or cosmo, can be traced back to Homer, who used it to refer to the order of soldiers on a battlefield, or a of rowers in their boats. Uh, is that what cosmos is to? Herodotus later called on the term in reference to the highly organized state of Sparta and to significant order in general. At some point, the term cosmos came to refer to the whole world, first designating the, the order exhibited by the universe and then by extension the universe itself as a well-ordered system, although it is not certain who initially proposed this cosmic meaning of cosmos. It may have been either Pythagoras in the 16th century or Protagoras in the 5th. The association was firmly in place by Plato's time. In fact, Plato called on a number of terms to signify the universe. Not only cosmos, but also to pan the all, onto all things, or on us, the heavens, and to Olam, the whole. This book is concerned with the manyness at the heart of this whole, with the multiple ways the worlds can be said to be multiple. It begins in chapter 1 with the reading of Plato's Temerius, Temerius, which insists that this world must be both singular and everlasting, and which establishes a blueprint for the 2,400 years of subsequent Western cosmology. But even in the Tamarius, uh, we shall see the singular world is not simply singular. Whether by design or in spite of himself, Plato offers a unique and undivided con cosmos that is nevertheless composed of difference, mixtures, and pluralities, the Platonic cosmos, can thus be regarded as an interplay of order and disorder of singular and the plural and unity and difference. I suppose that this interplay might best be called multiplicity, neither of the all is oneness of singularity, which William James referred to as monism, nor the disconnected indifference of plurality, multiplicity, would name that mixing of order and chaos through which worlds emerge both in the midst of multiplicity and as themselves multiple. <clears throat> The chapters that follow trace the theme of cosmic multiplicity through the tradition that runs from Plato to string theory. Chapter 1 concludes with Aristotle's consolation of a singular geocentric cosmos, a world whose oneness and eternity he believed Plato had failed to secure. Chapter 2 then explores the two cosmologies that posited the greatest threat to Platono, Aristotelian oneness and eternity, the spatial multiplicity of the atomist, and the temporal multiplicity of the Stoics. Of course, neither of these cosmologies uh, won. From Aristotle through Einstein, the main line philosophical and scientific tradition maintained that the world was singular and unchanging. But even the most loathsome ideas referred periodically, <clears throat> parting every effort to repress them, and it is these resurgences that the remaining chapters consider. Chapter 3 begins with Thomas Aquinas' final attempt to defend a cosmic singularity along Aristotelian lines, a position condemned a few years later when Bishop Etienne Kemper first declared Anathema the position that, that God cannot create more worlds than one. 
The decades and centuries that followed therefore witnessed a surge of treatises on the possibility of multiple worlds, uh, a trajectory that produced Nicholas of Cusa's centerless multiverse in the 15th century and cultivated Manet culminated in the infinite worlds of Giordano Bruno, whom the Roman Catholic Church executed in 1500. Chapter 4 begins with the death of Bruno, then a combination of traditional, theologically strained, and modern scientific rigor prompted thinking thinkers such as Galileo Galilei. Hans Johannes Kepler and Isaac Newton to confine that of his own to the one world they could see, a constraint that held among natural scientists until the first decade of the third millennium. Uh -huh. Is that where we are now? <laughs> hmm. This is the third millennium. Among those whom Kepler called mad philosophers, however, the question of multiple worlds persisted flourishing in the wake of René Descartes' vortex cosmology and reaching its apex in the extravagant, confused, almost entirely ignored, and eventually disavowed multiversal vision of a young Immanuel Kant. Chapter 5 opens in the early 20th century, by which time the singularity and eternity of the cosmos went without saying. Although the later principle is discredited with the mid-century rise of the hot Big Bang hypothesis, uh, the former would not be seriously challenged until the discovery of dark energy in 1998. Uh, since then, physicists have produced a flood of new cosmologies of the multiverse, which chapter 5 and 6 map in relation to one another and to the models that surface before them. Finally, the last chapter on endings focuses on the debate over the scientific status of multiverse cosmologies. How far can physics speculate about other universes without colliding with mad philosophy, or worse, with theology? The question seems ultimately to hinge on relation. If different two universes are totally separate from one another, then scientists are unjustified in relying on them as an explanatory principle. If, however, they somehow bear the imprints of one another, then cosmologists have something to measure and observe. So the multiverse might be a proper scientific objective at all. Mad philosophy is the me in the meantime will have a great deal to come to terms with. A multi universe that is neither one nor many, but a many one. A singular polarity polarity which renders our one world multiple, entangled, and vulnerable. But first things first. This is like the introduction. We had read the mapping the multiverse. It's like mapping the book. Uh -huh. So we're mapping the multiverses within this book. Uh -huh. The uh, chapters, in other words, uh -huh. of uh, mm. <laughs> we read. Uh, uh, <laughs> Worlds without end and many lives of the multiverse for Mary Jane Rubinstein. Did you like it? It's just a map of the book, actually. All we did was map the book. <laughs> All right.